أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أهله والصلاة على أهلها رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي وصلى الله على محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين I begin this talk of mine in the name of Allah the supreme infinite being he is Rahman and he is Rahim in the previous section we were talking about the intellect as a source of knowledge, of religious knowledge, apart from being a tool. And we mentioned the fact that uh, for developing a worldview, it is, uh, plays a very important role in determining the ethical, universal principles of ethics and morality also the intellect has a role to play and uh, coming to the Islamic laws, practical laws, it is very improbable that the intellect can play a direct role as a source of knowledge but it is a debatable issue and it has to be discussed at higher levels of uh, learning in this field. Of course, we will also mention the, the fact that uh, the role of other human sciences, philosophy, logic, uh, what role they play in the understanding of Islamic teachings. So basically, we're talking about the Islamic teachings that have been had to be derived from the sources. And as mentioned before, they are derived uh, from the sources in the various disciplines that we have. And the disciplines or the subjects, or you may say these uh, sciences that are studied at the Hosa, at the centers of academic learning, of religious learning, they can be classified in a different ways. We shall endeavor to classify the disciplines for you uh, in this section and then discuss each of them separately. But basically, as mentioned before, the, Islam the disciplines that are studied at the Hosa, they have been developed and compiled as a result of human effort, therefore they are prone to errors and the knowledge is uh, developing and the, the knowledge base and the, uh, the body of knowledge is developing and increasing and expanding o over the ages as is the case in any field of human research and discovery and we are developing uh, uh, the, the knowledge of religion according to the uh, times and ages and places that we're living in and due to other factors uh, so we should not be afraid of saying that the knowledge is developing or changing. So how is it possible that religion is a constant thing and it can not change and whatever is halal from the day of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu till the day of judgment? Yes, the teachings themselves that have been embodied in the Sharia, in the in the in ad-deen, they are constant. Ad-deen, that is the manifestation of the will of Allah, the legislative will of Allah is without any change. It cannot change at all. And uh, just as we said that the universal creations of Allah Almighty are also constant. They do not change. The laws that are governing them have to be discovered. That discovery may develop, may be expand. That understanding may expand over the ages. In the same way, our understanding of the legislative will, just as the understanding of the existential will or the generative will of Allah created the universe and our knowledge is expanding about it. And it is so in the same way, the legislative will of Allah that is manifested in the form of ad deen in the form of religion, our understanding is also increasing and expanding over the ages. Of course, if we had been living in the time of the Holy Prophet and the Imams, we would have been able to expand very quickly. 
we could have uh, developed very quickly and our understanding as individuals or as an institution would have uh, expanded at a f very fast pace but today one of the reasons that the discovery and understanding of religion is slow is because we are removed from the honor of being in the noble presence of the, uh, the infallible imams. So the disciplines that have been formed over, uh, established and uh, de developed over the ages can be uh, classified in uh, at least three ways that we are going to mention. One is the uh, classification, the traditional classification we have, and then we have the classification given by uh, the martyr Shaheed Mutahari, the respected honorable martyr Ayatollah Shaheed Mutahari, who uh, in his book on, this, on the introduction to Islamic sciences and Islamic studies gave a classification in its uh, introductory section. And then there's another classification that is being suggested here. So we have at least three classifications that can be put forward regarding this. Coming to the classification made by Shaykh Mutahari, uh, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he mentions the fact that we can classify Islamic studies into three groups uh, or three uh, different uh, groups which are of course interrelated and uh, they complement each other. For example, uh, uh, one c uh, way of uh, uh, classifying uh, Isla the Islamic uh, disciplines is that saying that all those subjects and disciplines are to be considered Islamic and religious if when the subject matter of that uh, discipline the, sub, the theme of that discipline, the subject matter, and the issues that are discussed in that uh, subject are either the principles of Islam, the usul ad deen or they are the furu'u ad deen So the study of Islamic principles and the study of uh, ethics and morals and the study of the ahkam, they would be all, any subject that is dealing, any discipline which is dealing with these three would be uh, considered to be an Islamic subject like Ilm al-Kalam theology, Islamic theology or Islamic ethics or Islamic laws, fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence and law. And also all those subjects in which uh, all those sources upon which this understanding of the Islamic uh, te teachings, the ma'arif is based upon they will also be a part of Islamic uh, disciplines like the Quran and Sunnah. The Quran and Sunnah are the sources of Islamic knowledge. Therefore, the subjects or disciplines dealing with the Islamic sources, such as Ilm al Tafsir or Ulum al Quran they, or Ilm al Hadith, they will also be considered as religious subjects. So, this is one way of classifying Islamic subjects. Islamic Disciplines are those who discuss the Islamic principles, the usul and the furud, or you could say worldview and ideology as mentioned before. And also all those uh, disciplines which are discussing the sources of these Islamic teachings. The secondly, apart from the first type which we just mentioned, Shaykh Matahari says, that not only those subjects and disciplines which are talking about the Islamic teachings or, or their sources, also any subject which is going to help us and assist us and facilitate our understanding as a prerequisite of those subjects would also be considered as uh, an Islamic uh, subject. For example, we talk about Arabic grammar, uh, Arab, the Arabic language, without which we cannot understand uh, the Qur'an. Or when we talk about uh, theology from a rational uh, approach, basic, pure rational approach. Or when we talk about ethics from a, a rational approach. So here, uh, even logic, even those subjects which are going to be prerequisites of the, of the first type, in that case, they would also be considered as Islamic subjects and disciplines. And the third uh, issue is where 
The third level is that all those uh, subjects which are necessary for the establishment of an Islamic state where uh, an Islamic uh, s state is established and an uh, independent, self-sufficient state is established and it is based on whatever an Islamic state as an independent state requires that is going to be uh, necessary for the establishment of such an uh, independent state is uh, uh, the, uh, that knowledge is considered to be an Islamic knowledge whether it is the Islamic studies that we have just mentioned the Islamic subjects that we have mentioned above or even those which are uh, science and technology which is important for the ulama so for that uh, for example, when we say Talabul ilm fariz ala kulli muslim, the Holy Prophet is quoted as saying that every Muslim should acquire knowledge. So here we mean the knowledge which is necessary for the establishment of an Islamic state. Some levels of it is necessary for all Muslims. Some specialized levels are wajib e kifai. They are not uh, wajib on all, but some people have to acquire that knowledge to become experts in that. Therefore, Everything which is necessary for the establishment of an independent Islamic state that is considered to be Islamic knowledge and Islamic subject. And again, the fourth issue that is mentioned in his classification and taxonomy is everything that has developed in the centers of Islamic learning, which is considered to be even not an Islamic subject, but has uh, developed in the Islamic tradition, has taken roots in the culture of an Islamic system of education, that is also considered to be uh, an Islamic subject, like, uh, for example, astronomy and mathematics also would be considered to be uh, a part, uh, because it was developed by the scholars of Islam in the Hosa, Hosa, uh, in the academic centers, of learning that was also considered an Islamic subject.